Step in, get that lump of coal out. Now, I'm delighted to say we're uh, going to go to Melbourne, where we'll be talking to Aaron Shapiro. Uh, many of you will be familiar with Todd Sampson. I certainly am. I worked with him on the Gruen transfer for a long time and uh, in advertising. Todd Sampson has done a series of uh, uh, TV shows called Body Hack. Uh, impressive stuff. He's a very impressive guy. He uh, puts his body into the most extraordinary circumstances on the bottom of the sea, climbing Mount Everest with shirts going into the jungles, uh, all terrific stuff. But in this instance, his latest film, uh, he's put his body through the experience of going to the Gaza Strip, uh, which we all know is uh, the contentious area which was handed over by Israel to the Palestinians uh, a decade or so ago and has basically become a terrorist haven under Hamas. Todd Sampson went there to put his body through uh, whatever experiences he, he found there. But unfortunately, it would appear, we're going to speak to Aaron Shapiro in a second, that uh, he was uh, basically fake news was delivered to him via the Palestinian authorities that uh, he went to see. And we're going to talk to our Aaron about what was wrong with the film. Aaron Shapiro, how are you? Fine, thank you, Rowan. So, Aaron, you are the policy director at the Australian, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council in Melbourne. Uh, you're pretty upset about this particular film. Talk us through, just broadly, your overall concerns about Todd Sampson's body hack in Gaza. Well, first of all, I do want to say that I, I, I feel that in good faith Todd Sampson went to Gaza intending to do one film and, and ended up doing another. Unfortunately, when you change your plan midstream, things can happen, and I think that he got carried away by the people around him. I think that it, uh, uh, he's a very talented filmmaker, and he had good intentions, and perhaps he'll consider doing a, uh, another piece from the Israeli perspective. That, I want to say that, first of all, because I do think that there was some uh, interesting work that he had done there. But when you lo actually look at the piece as a whole, there are some really big problems with it. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, your, your concern is that uh, he was had a, a fixer, who uh, basically a woman who took him around and showed him, uh, and uh, that she was in essence a Hamas opera, operator or operative. And in your opinion, it was no different to having a uh, in the old days the communists would take the fixers uh, would have a fixer to escort you around uh, the Potemkin villages and so on. Tell us a little bit about this woman. Well, unfortunately, that's the case. Now, um, it's interesting that when uh, Samson came back and he was promoting his show on the, the project, he didn't want to name her, although he, he gave a clue of who she was because of a title that she uses. Uh, it doesn't really matter who she is exactly. Uh, what's important to know is that Hamas does not let any journalists come into Gaza without having a handler. And so, or the, a fixer or a handler. So they, this person will take them around, they'll give them information if they ask for it, but they, they're really there to w make sure that they see the right things and that they get introduced to the right people. And her fingerprints are all over this. <laughs> now, tell us about the speedboat. So there's a few areas, there are many areas of concern, but we'll just have a quick look at the speedboat uh, and then you can tell us about that. We'll just have a quick look. It's quite nerve wracking. Knowing we've got drones above us in the Navy there, and everyone's looking at us. This protest is at the northern end of Gaza. And from here, it looks like a war zone. Jesus. So, Aaron, in your opinion, what's actually going on there? OK, this is a case where, if you actually are familiar with the area, you see that it's a bit misleading, because he starts that last piece talking about fishermen. But he's not with fishermen in the, the boats. He's actually in, in very quick motorboats that are uh, following. You can see the, the, the coast right by the, uh, the boat. He's, he's, he says himself he's at the northern end of Gaza. So what he's doing is racing. His boats, in, th in, the, in several boats, are racing towards the Israeli border. 
And uh, the Israeli Navy is, is there to prevent uh, infiltrations from the Israeli border. And those boats, there are no fences there. Those boats could be at, at Zikim Beach, which is a public beach, people enjoying themselves, sunning themselves. It's two kilometers from that point, the Israeli beach. And so uh, there have been terror attacks. Israel cannot play around. And they sent warning shots his way, unsurprisingly. I find it difficult to believe that Samson wouldn't be aware that he would receive warning shots in boats that were racing towards the border. And, uh, but they knew that they would be warning shots and nothing but. So there's a bit of, of manufactured drama there. <laughs> Do you think the handler, would, would, wouldn't suggest Todd himself would be in the know, but are you suggesting the handler put him in that situation with well, these speedboats racing to, to the border? purely uh, to draw out those shots and give him the footage you wanted? If, here's the thing. If, if, he, if he knew, I'm not saying he knew, but if yeah. he didn't know, then that was a terrible thing what they did to put him in danger. Mm -hmm. If he did know, then it's misleading. I'm not saying he knew or didn't know, but yeah. come on. Yeah. You, you, you knew that you weren't... He was talking about being a, being a fisherman going way out to sea, but we as the viewer can see the, sh the shoreline very close by, and then you can see the actual the, the border where the, that protest is, where the, the, the scene ends at the end of the show. The wall, the, the, the border wall, which is a small little wall going slightly into the ocean, just a rock bar, a sea break. You can see it right in your frame, and it's, 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 he's so close <laughs> to that border. That uh, James, you must understand. Uh, yeah, you can see it in that picture right there right now. You can really see that is the border. It's a so jetty. That's not, per <laughs> that's not really clear. Yeah. And Israel, that particular area is not easily defended. So uh, Israel had to be very careful there what goes on. James? Yeah, of course. Um, there was another uh, episode in the, in the show where they're talking about, I think, the relativities between Palestinian Islamic Jihad and um, Hamas. Um, I think we've got another clip here. Yeah, that's uh, right. Have and, a look. We might want to have a look at this here. <laughs> Palestinian Islamic Jihad is a militant Islamic organization with the sole aim of the destruction of Israel and the creation of a sovereign Palestinian state. Before the blockade, Islamic Jihad carried out dozens of attacks in Israel. Buses were a frequent target. So were restaurants, shopping malls, and checkpoints. Hundreds of Israelis were killed and injured. Now, Aaron, can you tell us what's the actual fact behind this attack that, that we're talking about here? Was this Islamic Jihad or was this somebody else? Well, here the, here's the irony that he uses footage. He, uh, Todd Sampson could have used any footage. He chose footage that ha just happened to show a Hamas attack. It, it's actually time-stamped. I happen to have lived in the country during all these attacks, so I could tell you. And I went back and checked the statistics. Hamas was responsible for twice as many attacks of this nature in Israel as Islamic Jihad. In fact, Islamic Jihad wasn't even second uh, in the number of attacks. Fatah was the second. So it, this, uh, w I thought that more than anything else, the, the, the influence of the Hamas fixer or handler is most evident in this scene because they, they say, oh, you want to see some people who look like terrorists? I'll bring you to Islamic Jihad. When in actuality, these are they're really uh, cooperative terror organizations. They even come out with joint press releases. Uh, <laughs> they, they work, no, it's, it's like Chevrolet and Buick. Uh, they both, when, when, when he asked them, where do you get your money from? He says, Iran. Guess what? Hamas also gets money from Iran and weapons from Iran. So, so just, uh, yeah, there's they, a bit of a sanitizing and saying who's, it, it's the not so good cop and the bad cop, but they're really two sides of the same coin. And talking about sanitizing, there was a so-called martyr featured in this episode yeah, as well. Uh, tell true. us about that. He was presented as a father of three and his wife was pregnant and he was uh, shot in the chest. Uh, yes. But uh, again, tell us about the real facts behind what happened there. Well, I, you know, I, I, it's my job to do research. It took me five minutes to find Palestinian social media that showed what this man's job really was. First of all, he was a member, member of the Fatah group. Second of all, he was part of a, what's called a tire unit, which is a tire unit is a, a, 
it's, it's actually a quasi-military unit that, that, whose job is to go right to the front line in these protests and to uh, light uh, tires. Now, they, they, he, uh, Samson calls tire lighting a provocation. They have a military purpose. It's to create a smoke screen. And under the cover of that smoke screen, they can try and, and cut the fence. So he was actually a member of a team that cuts fences. So that is why I, I was not there when he was shot, and I can't give you those circumstances. And I, but I can tell you that he was not, his mother called him a peaceful protester, and I know in her heart she wanted to believe that was true. And we all have sympathy for a mother who's lost their son. We understand that. But the fact remains that he involved himself in activity that, that was going to create a rupture in the fence. And when that fence was open, uh, Samson says, oh, they just want to walk to Jerusalem. That's, that isn't what Hamas said they wanted to do. They wanted to bring in, mix in between the crowd of unarmed people. They wanted to mix in armed fighters and go to the Jewish farms, which were just beyond the fence, and kidnap people, perhaps kill people. We're not sure, but Israel couldn't take that risk. Nobody was going to get to that fence, and nobody was going to cut that fence. And Israel made very clear that anybody who came close to that fence was taking their life into their own hands. You know, he makes a, a lot. He makes a lot of, uh, of, of, of time. He spends a lot of time showing how how shooting people in the leg is a very uh, hard thing. You know, very hard thing to see. It's a very harsh thing to do. But it, honestly, he doesn't give too many other options of what Israel had to do at that point. Okay. Uh, another well, thing. I, Sorry, Aaron, we're going to we're gonna have to leave yeah. it there, but thanks so much. Uh, right. Interesting to get your points of view on that. Obviously, we blurred the footage uh, there of the uh, man who was dead. Um, thanks so much, Aaron Shapiro, for talking to us about Todd Sampson's film and your concerns about the accuracy of it being portrayed. Maybe Todd will Thank be in you. touch with you to do another film over there. Let's hope so. Thanks so much, Aaron Shapiro. Thank you very much. And we'll be back.